solo melodías que le hagan ser. Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz singer and guitarist Camila Meza. Over the course of our interview, she discussed her roots in her homeland of Chile and how she was influenced by her first big jazz icon, Pat Metheny. She came over to the United States to study at the new school and moved on to New York City to live out her jazz dreams. And she did just that. Camila is going to release a new album in February of 2016 called Traces, and it's a great listen, and she is busy getting the music out there. Please dig this interview, my friends. Thank you for taking some time to talk with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and start here. I know you have a lot going on with your new album, Traces, but give me kind of a snapshot of activity that's going on with you lately. Oh, okay. So um, so my album is coming out on, 20, on the 26th of February. Uh, the CD release is going to be in New York on the 24th of February at the Jazz Standard. I did a pre-release tour in Chile in in January. It's going to be really fun. I'm slowly putting up uh, the calendar and I'm excited about the release that's coming up right now, like in a few, two weeks, three weeks. Wonderful. Give me an idea, you're in your, your homeland right now, give me an idea of what it was like to grow up in Chile and how you got the jazz bug. Well, I, I come from a, I would say it's a musical family, although um, they're not, not necessarily professional musicians, although my siblings, they're all, they all are. I think we got the gene from my dad, who actually studied uh, music for a little bit, Music was always around. I think we... Actually, right now, I'm with them. I'm visiting them in Chile, and it reminds me, like, how musical my family is. Like, we're literally singing the whole day, like, out of, you know, like, simple things. And, like, we just... Last night, we were just playing... I was playing guitar with them, and we were improvising. And everybody has, like, a really good ear, and I'm having a lot of fun with them right now. And in Chile... Yeah, the jazz scene is small. I think I, I got I got really, really attracted to the sound of jazz. My brother uh, is a drummer, and he he used to listen to fusion, like Chick Corea and, and Pat Metheny, and I started getting really attracted to that sound. I was playing in more like funk and rock and soul bands when I was in my teenage years, but then slowly I started gravitating towards the sound of jazz and I got to meet people that were into it and and I started listening to to albums they started giving me I remember a friend in 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 high school actually she gave me a, a John Coltrane album Blue Train and then when I got into the music school a friend gave me a Wes Montgomery album that literally changed the whole game. I was listening a lot to Pat Metheny, for example, and then I started checking out the tradition too, and so I got like to really understand the whole like scope. It was easy to meet the musicians there because it's a small community of jazz musicians, so you get to to meet them very easily and play with them, and it was that was really really great because I started playing as well and i haven't stopped <laughs> cool well it also mentioned that you were really swayed by 70s rock like zeppelin and hendrix yeah yeah that was like my my first you know uh influence into into the guitar i would say like more on the on the rock side and then with jazz i started discovering so much too you know like i got into into brazilian music as well you know yeah, and I'm a, I'm a, a very, I would say I'm a, an eclectic person in a way. You know, I listen to all types of music. Whatever really, like, grabs me, I I really get into it. And, yeah, but definitely Hendrix. I really wanted to be like him at a certain point, working out. <laughs> nice. Well, and then, of course, on the jazz side of things, your first icon was Pat Metheny, is that correct? My brother, actually, he gave me a... The Pat Metheny group was very, very famous in Chile. And I remember getting the first circle and listening to to that album a lot. And 
And also, I remember having this idea of like, oh, I love that round sound of like the guitar that you know Pat Metheny had or George Be George Benson had. I remember at the beginning of the guitar, you know, world, I was like, oh, I really love the sound. I really want to, you know, like get into it. So it was Pat Metheny, George Benson, and then I discovered was. And was like, Whoa. So when you were a kid, did you always think you wanted to get into music, or did you have any other dreams? Actually, I was so certain that that was my path. I, it was sort of like always my ref, like my refuge or my place where I could find, you know, like so much, you know, when I was a, a teenager, like entertainment and creativity, and I was really, you know, it was part of my identity, also, you know. Yeah. So, obviously, the jazz bug stuck, and you moved on to the Santiago Pro Jazz Institute. Talk to me a little bit about your time there. Yeah, well, when I decided to, you know, pursue the career in music, I also knew that I didn't want to go to the conservatory of music because, you know, like the music schools in Chile. By the time that I was there, that I was studying, that I was deciding to pursue this they weren't necessarily so developed so like to study popular music in chile then maybe it was like oh but what are you going to do with your life that's not like uh, an actual career or whatever you know like there's that fear i also was very specific you know because i re i knew that i wanted to go for popular music and i knew that i really wanted to study jazz so one of the few schools it was this pro jazz that really grabbed me because it was also very, you know, like, focused on this type of music. And so I have to say that the two years that I was there was a great experience because I actually ended up meeting, like, my mentors that gave me my first gigs and that, like, actually made me also discover that I was, that I, you know, could, like, be a singer as well and take it professionally. Because by then I was, you know, just being a guitar player and using my voice sort of more like a like a tool but then in school I met this teacher that he he said no you you have like so much talent for singing and great ears you should totally go for it and I was like whoa okay great and he actually gave me my first gigs and I started like gigging with uh, as a singer as well it was very unexpected and then I absolutely fell in love with immense expression that like that singing specifically in that moment jazz because it was so liberating for me the idea to of being able to sing a song and vary the melody and create in the moment that was like super appealing for me that time in pro jazz was very you know like I was basically sort of starting my real project music project that is what I'm still doing now let me ask you this. You graduated from the New School of Jazz in 2012. You studied with Peter Bernstein, Vic Juris, and some other real jazz luminaries. What was that experience like? It was amazing. I mean, like, the whole the whole New York experience has been, has been so, so amazing for me because I came, I went to New York and I really wanted to, you know, like, to become a sponge and grab all the, the knowledge from this great, masters and so the possibility of sharing you know like one-to-one -one with uh, this you know amazing musicians and it was so so uh, nurturing for me as a musician you know because you're you're able to at the same time when you have those private lessons because with them I, I took private lessons that's the cool thing that you get it at the new school you get you know like one-to-one -one lessons and you you know you can also talk about life and you can you can also understand the way they're approaching music and in a very you know uh, personal way so that was very important for me you know to get to know these musicians and understand you know very deeply how they were seeing music well and obviously everything worked out pretty well in new york um, over the five years, you start performing at places like the Jazz Standard Village, Vanguard, Blue Note, Smalls. What has it been like to be in a place like New York that's basically the known as, around the world as the place that jazz is made and to play in places that are that historic? It was, it's been amazing because, you know, when I was in Chile, if all those names, like of clubs, I knew them all, basically, because, you know, you see 
CDs that like recorded live at the Village Vanguard or recorded or they're playing in small. So you see, you know, you see the, the musicians that you follow, you see them, but you don't imagine, you don't know exactly what they look like or what is the scene really like. So when I, I you know, moved to New York, it was so great to actually experience the scene in that way, you know, like understand where like all musicians were moving and to get in, in places like the Village Vanguard, which is, you know, it's one of the few that actually remains as, as it was back in the day. So that has been really great too, you know, to experience the history of jazz in first person and to and also to be able to, to play in these places. It's very it's very humbling. I'm I'm so I'm really grateful for like my time in New York. It's been so 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 great for me as a musician. I definitely I said it I said this like when I was already my first or second year that like I thought that I had learned as if I had lived like six years already. It's like so exponential, like how much information there's there just by hanging out with musicians and and listening to music every night. I mean, it's like the musician's dream for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so you have also been able to take your music out around the world. You've been to Poland, you've been around Europe and France. Give me an idea what it's like to travel and to give your music to people. Well, that's like one of my favorite things to do. Absolutely, because I love traveling so much and I love meeting new people and I love bringing my music to people that, you know, might have or might have not heard me. So that experience to, you know, to get to show your, your music in very different like parts of the world and get the response of people, the love, the different reactions and to get to connect basically to people from everywhere in the world, that's like absolutely you know, one of my favorite things to do, because you, after all, you understand that, you know, like, music is totally, like, the universal expression, you know, and I, I get to, you know, connect with people that we maybe don't have, like, the same upbringing, or, you know, or we are, our histories are very different, and then we're playing music, I'm playing music for them, and we're, like, totally connected in that moment, that's a really precious moments for me that I yeah I can't wait to keep doing that because and I also I love culture you know I love culture I love language I love uh, food <laughs> so <laughs> I love traveling and getting to take my music everywhere so the one thing that we've touched on are your teachers that you've had over the years who would you say has probably taught you the most about music well that's a hard question because <laughs> I feel like everybody has given me so many different aspects of it, you know, because everybody's, it's different. And and that's what I really like from, from getting to share with different musicians and people. I do have to say, I maybe, you know, I had a teacher in, in school, Sam Yahel, he was an amazing, amazing teacher. He made me grow so much uh, as a musician. And even in Chile, you know, like so many, not necessarily known musicians, but just when they can say something that can change your life like someone teachers can definitely change your life that's why i think it's so important to have like mentors and also some of them in chile particularly they totally made me believe in myself too you know like they would cheer me up and say you you can definitely do that you need you need to like focus and concentrate and just keep practicing and you know you're gonna get to the highest your highest potential so that those things are, are important and they can come from like even not necessarily teachers you know sometimes they come from from your own peers so but yeah like I, I would say everybody has given me like definitely something to learn from other than Pat Metheny who would you say are your jazz heroes ah, I have so many <laughs> and also not necessarily so much you know, like, not necessarily only on guitar. I have so many other musicians that I look up to. You were talking about people that are still alive, for example, <laughs> to narrow it down. Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, a guitar player that I really, really love from today is Kurt Rosenwinkel. I love Brad Meldow, piano player. I really love Keith Jarrett. 
there's so many. Yeah, no, that's good. That that's a, that's a kind of a good top echelon. So let me ask you this: Why do you love jazz? If I had to like say one word or two words, it's just the limitless aspect of its expression, the freedom. You know, we we keep saying this about jazz, and it's true. You know, it's. It's one of those uh, those genres or those expressions. I would call it more an expression or an art form. I don't know. It's so big and so so broad that that's what I'm attracted to. It. I feel like uh, it's endless. You know, I could keep learning. I could keep expressing myself through it and not get bored. And the ability to communicate in the moment with musicians, you feel like you're talking. You know, like you're you need to be in the moment actually for it to happen. If you're not, then you feel that you're not really playing it. So let me ask you this. What's the greatest thing about waking up every day? <laughs> huh. uh, living. <laughs> Just living. So, uh, well, yes. And also, music is definitely one of my, you know, big, big motors in this life. And also love, family, friends, lovers. <laughs> huh. um, well, right now, I... I am in front of nature, and nature is definitely one of like my most immense like loves for for living and for waking up. You know, just being close to to nature is like something that I can't you know explain. Actually, well, luckily in New York, I live close to a park, Prospect Park. Yeah. And, yeah, that's definitely my escape in New York, you know, like, cause it's the crazy city, but I get to, I get to experience a little bit of nature in, in that beautiful park, like, my home. Let me ask you this, say we yeah. talk in 10 years from now, and I ask you what's been going on, what are you going to want to tell me has happened? <gasps> Whoa, I have so many ideas and projects. I definitely, oh, I want to be able to keep recording music and doing different projects. I want to be able to keep writing music. I want to be able to keep touring. I want to be able to also have a feeling that I had given something, you know, that had made people happy. I feel that, I mean, I feel that music definitely gives me that and I want to be able to, to keep doing that, you know, like... It's like my mission. In a way, I, I've, I, I feel that I've led a life, although, you know, it wasn't necessarily that easy because I had to move from my country. I had to, you know, like start so many things from zero in a way. But I feel that I have led a, a, a life that I really wanted, you know, like doing this music and releasing this album in particular. It's a really important thing for me because it, Sort of like this is my dream, basically, you know, being able to to record that and give that to people. That's like, it's like a dream. So I'm really happy about this. So let me ask you this: Everybody has a version of who you are. Your family does. Your friends do. The fans that listen to your music. But who do you think you are? <laughs> yeah. um, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to to live. You know, with a in a very loving way. You know, yeah. that's I feel that that's important for me to and trying to bring peace as well. You know, for myself and for people around. I feel that you know, if I if if the question was like, how do I want people to remember me? And maybe it would be like, you know, she brought you know us like some joy, some good times. You know, some good music, hopefully. Right on. <laughs> That's perfect. That's a perfect way to kind of wrap everything up. That was my final question. I saved the hardest for last. Good luck with Traces. It was a delight to talk with you. Same here. Hopefully we'll talk in 10 years and we'll figure out what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All Thank right. you so much. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Camila for her time, music, and her story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or you can always visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Mm -hmm.
Jazz.